Good point to get started. So welcome everyone. This is Living on Chain. It's a monthly event that we have on the Gnosis Chain Discord where we bring in uh, some of the best teams, uh, you know, builders and... Oh, hold on. Hey, referee, if you can mute, mute your mic. Sorry. Sorry, bro. I'm going to mute you. Okay. We get together with the best builders on Gnosis Chain, and they run through a demo. Um, today, we have Eddie from the Connects team. And uh, before I hand it over, Eddie, to you, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction, um, or rather, Connects, a quick introduction. And then you can introduce yourself and give us some, some more context. So Connects is the most secure interoperability, interoperability protocol allowing users to bridge funds and developers to build asynchronous solidity for the first time. They're here to talk about um, their chain abstraction toolkit. So uh, I'll let Eddie explain it because he's gonna do a much better job than me, but chain abstraction is in reference to account abstraction. But the difference is, is uh, Connext has created a toolkit basically for developers to build dApps that don't require users to really care about what chain they're on. Um, so it's a huge improvement for Web3 UX, which currently suffers from uh, poor UX, because if you've ever bridged funds or you know, tried to um, you know, provide liquidity, there's a lot of steps and hoops that you need to jump through in order to do so. So I think this is a huge unlock that um, connects has developed this toolkit. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Eddie from the Connects team. And yeah, thanks so much, Eddie, for making the time. And I will also stop sharing my screen so you can share your screen. Um, All right, cool. Thanks, go. John. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the apt intro there of um, Chain Abstraction. Uh, I guess today I'll, I'll go through a little bit um, into uh, just a little bit more detail about what Chain Abstraction actually entails. Um, but before that, just as a quick intro, uh, as you said, John, I'm Eddie. I'm an integration engineer at Connext. Um, I've been working with Connext for uh, a while now, and we've been kind of building up to this moment where, um, you know, since I've joined, the, the ethos has kind of been to improve uh, user experience in Web3. And I think this uh, kind of chain abstraction concept that we're now pushing out is really going to help the space, um, especially because how you know how bad UX is kind of across across the board here, uh, just the experience of having to you know source gas on multiple chains, um, bridge your funds across to multiple chains, and then interact with protocols like switching you know networks in your wallet and all of these different steps that kind of make the whole uh, experience not so smooth when you're doing things in Web three. Um, so we're, we're really excited to kind of push out this, this paradigm of um, chain abstraction where you don't have to uh, even consider, like, you don't even have to worry about what chain you're on when you're interacting with protocols. So uh, we're really excited to kind of get that um, out the door here. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, this is kind of like a new, a new announcement um, for, you know, just like a week or two ago, we, we, we dropped uh, an announcement on Twitter. And uh, we did say that we're going to publish uh, this chain abstraction toolkit to help builders like um, turn their protocols into a chain abstracted protocol quite easily. So today I just wanted to go through uh, what that looks like, what that process looks like for builders. Um, probably not going to dive too much into the code, but I will show a little bit of what uh, code would be involved when you're doing this. Um, and then also demonstrate a protocol that has been working with us to uh, adopt this chain abstraction standard, mean finance. And um, I'll give a demonstration of uh, what, a, what a new like uh, UX can, can be uh, after a protocol has adopted the chain abstraction standard. Um, Super yeah. cool. And if there's still time, then may maybe we can do a short AMA uh, after you're done. Yeah, that'd be great. So let me go ahead and share cool. my screen okay. here. Okay, cool. 
it looks like I'm on. All right. Um, so this is just from our site, a uh, quick, like high level general overview of what this looks like. Um, I wanted to start with, you know, why current multi-chain UX sucks. Uh, we have this little clip here that I wanted to demonstrate um, just to show you like what it looks like right now for a user to interact with protocols that aren't chain abstracted. So say you wanted to supply some funds on a pool, but you have USDC on Optimism. So now you have to, and you want to supply it on Polygon. So first you're going to have to like bridge those funds. Um, the protocol will usually tell you that, you know, you're going to need gas to do that as well. So you need to bridge funds. You need to get gas on that chain. Uh, you need to reconnect back to the DAP after you've done that. And then you can actually finally go ahead with your transaction. So there's a couple of different steps in, you know, the current, the current uh, paradigm where you have to like exit out of the DAP that you're using, go to some kind of bridge UI, uh, you know, wait for your funds to be bridged potentially swap that into gas on the destination chain that you're using and then go back to the original DAP that you were interacting with and then finally do the operation that you, you know, set out to do. So through all of those different clicks and sites that you have to go through, um, a lot of the time you're going to, you're just going to lose users uh, because people's attention spans aren't that long <laughs> and uh, any, you know, additional clicks, any, any complexity in the UI is just going to be a bad experience for people. So, that's kind of current state. But once you've chain abstracted your protocol, um, the difference is that, you know, once you've connected your wallet, it doesn't matter what chain you're already on. It doesn't matter what, you know, where your funds already live. As soon as you uh, interact with the chain abstracted protocol, the protocol itself just does everything under the hood to uh, make it possible for you to inter interact on that protocol, um, you know, regardless of where that pool lives an optimism and I wanted to deposit into a polygon pool, uh, the chain attracted protocol will handle all the bridging, all the swapping under the hood for you. And the user at the end of the day just, you know, didn't have to change uh, networks and had to go to a bridge and have to bridge their funds and swap. None of that uh, is, is basically part of the flow anymore. So um, that's kind of what we mean, what we mean by chain abstraction. Like the user does not care about the chain that they're on. Um, and yeah, that, that should provide a much like smoother, uh, experience for, uh, for, for users that are using web three protocols. And so, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to publish uh, a set of tools that will allow builders to actually make their protocols chain abstracted. And so I guess the point of today's demo is for me to kind of demonstrate, uh, the, the different steps um, that somebody has to go through to make their protocol chain abstracted uh, and to kind of clear up any, you know, confusion that there might be. Uh, if, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But uh, yeah, how does that sound if I just jump straight into uh, the chain abstraction flow? Yeah, okay, that, cool. that sounds great. This is amazing so, um, so far. I'm going to start with our docs. Uh, we do have this new section um, under developers in chain abstraction here. Um, hopefully this is big enough for people to see, but, uh, yeah, chain abstraction is basically going to look something like this. So if we take Ave as an example, um, Ave has like their core contracts, there's going to be like a supply function that's called when somebody, um, interacts with their UI and wants to supply some funds to a pool, let's say. So chain abstraction is going to, um, not require any changes to the actual Ave core contracts. But what it's going to do is, um, from the UI side, it's going to use our SDK to construct this X call. Um, this X call transaction is called on our Connect contracts from the origin chain, which in this case is Optimism. And then Connect is going to bridge the funds that the user provides over to Polygon. And then uh, the integrator is going to build this adapter contract. Um, and this adapter contract has to implement this X receive interface. Uh, and once it does that, Connex will basically call that X receive function, which will then forward the, the call to the, uh, the core Ave contracts to then do this, uh, the supplying. So, um, at the end of the day, what the integrator really has to build is one, the UX integration that does the X call to Connext, And then they also have to build a adapter contract that calls into their core protocol. Um, and that will basically be what we call like the forward call. Um, and then, you know, any A tokens or whatever, like, side effects that come from calling the core protocol 
uh, will then be called, and then you'll you have to do some logic to uh, like deliver the tokens to the user on the destination chain at the end. So this whole thing just um, it doesn't require any changes to core protocol uh, contracts. Um, it requires one additional contract that needs to be created, and then some innovation work on the front end uh, to make this all possible. So our toolkit our toolkit's goal is to make the creation of this adapter contract easy. Um, and also to make an SDK that people can use uh, from from uh, user interfaces uh, to construct any call data that's needed for um, these contract calls. So yeah, in this example, it would be to uh, supply funds to an Aave pool. And uh, now, in this case, wh wherever these um, wherever Aave is deployed uh, and wherever it connects to supports, a user can actually deposit to any uh, any pool on any chain from any of the Connect supported chains. OK, so what does it actually take to build this chain abstraction layer? Well, like I said, there's two steps. There is the smart contract piece, where you're basically building the um, the adapter contract. And then there's also the, the UI piece, where you can use our chain abstraction SDK to do most of the, um, to do most of the logic. And uh, I didn't want to dive like too much into the code here, but there are a couple of abstract contracts and like template contracts that we've created to make this whole thing easier. Um, the first one is this like swap forwarder X receiver. Um, the reason why we built this one is so that all receiver contracts can follow this like same chain abstraction pattern. So you'll see here that uh, this swap forwarder X receiver is implementing a forwarder X receiver and a swap adapter. Um, those are uh, those are two other contracts that we built um, that basically enable one um, any to any asset swaps. So uh, this enables users to use any asset on the origin chain and then interact with the protocol on the destination chain using any other asset. Um, so this is kind of important as part of the chain abstraction flow because. Uh, you know, not only do you want to enable users to use any chain, but you also don't want them to have to go and swap funds in order to interact with the protocol. Like sometimes the protocol might only support a few funds or um, like maybe they're depositing into a specific pool that requires like USDC and let's say they don't have USDC on, on the chain. So uh, what you're going to want to do is allow them to basically supply any arbitrary asset and then have the chain abstraction flow swap those assets under the hood for them. So that's where the swap adapter comes in. And then the forwarder X receiver is just another like standard um, contract that kind of exposes the, this prepare uh, and a forward interface. So um, these are just kind of steps that you need to take uh, to prepare the cross-chain call and then to forward the, uh, the call data for the call on the destination chain contract. So in this case, what's being forwarded is the supply call. So you do some preparation ahead of time, you uh, send the X call through Connext, and then your adapter contract that implements the receiver interface will forward the supply call to Aave. Um, that's what I mean by uh, the forward call here. So having this um, swap forwarder X receiver is really nice because then in a, like an example um, adapter contract, all you have to do is inherit that swap forwarder X receiver. And then you um, basically just uh, implement the forward function call. So what that's going to do is uh, it's just going to be a um, encoded, well, it's going to decode the call data that you send in. Um, and this can be any like arbitrary call data. So whatever, whatever information that your protocol needs. So in the supply function in that case, it would probably, it would probably be something like um, amount and the asset uh, and like slippage parameters or something like that. And then in the forward call, you're going to uh, decode those parameters, and then you're just going to forward the call to your protocol. Um, I, I will have a, uh, a more uh, specific example of this with the mean finance stuff uh, that, I, that I show in a bit here. Um, and you can see how the mean finance team basically built an adapter uh, super easy that hooks into their core contracts um, and forwards the call to their core contracts. Uh, so that, that's kind of like the smart contract part. Um, pretty simple, honestly, like just building the adapter is uh, is just like the implementation of one function. 
Um, as the integrator, you should be familiar with like how your protocol works and what function you actually need to call on the destination side. So uh, this should be pretty straightforward. And then the other piece um, of this is to have uh, an SDK that you can use on the front end to actually construct all the call data for the swaps, uh, for the cross-chain call. And then, um, yeah, basically uh, there, there is some UX work to be done in order for you to allow users to select like uh, what chain they want to use funds from. And then um, at the end of the whole bridging process, like you want to show the users some kind of status perhaps um, of the bridge call, of the actual, of the actual um, call on destination. Uh, and there are certain um, tools that we're trying to uh, publish also that aren't just for um, contracts and SDKs, but also to uh, show like best practices for how you can do this from the UI. So uh, also coming down the, the line here is a UI template uh, that we're going to show for how you integrators can just easily uh, you know, consider the, the UX considerations and build that into their UI. Um, okay, so hopefully that was a decent general overview of what the chain abstraction integration flow kind of looks like. Um, there's the contract part and then there's the UI part. So I did want to dive into like what Mean Finance did um, and kind of show like an actual integration that happened and then uh, show you guys like what the, the UX looks like at the end um, of the integration here. Awesome. So... Yeah, glad to hear that. Um, so here, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show what the, what the adapter contract looks like it's for me. Super Mean. cool. Um, so actually, this is kind of like a two-part thing, uh, but both both contracts are very, very small. So the adapter is what's actually going to call uh, or what's actually going to forward the call to the mean finance like core contracts. So one of the core contracts is this IDCA hub. Um, mean finance is... Uh, it is this protocol that allows users to basically DCA into assets. Um, and what they wanted to do was they wanted to enable users to uh, send funds from any chain and then DCA those into any other asset on any other chain. So this adapter is just pulling in their IDCA hub contract and literally just calling their deposit function. So this is equivalent to Aave's uh, supply that we just looked at. Um, and that's literally all it does. So this is what I mean by the forward call is um, you're just forwarding the call to the core contract here. Obviously, there's like some approvals that need to be done. Um, but all, but the main thing is that you uh, is that the adapter actually calls the core contract here. And then their target contract is just um, implementing that adapter. It's implementing that swap forwarder X receiver that I mentioned before. And then uh, they create the forward function call here where they're calling the deposit after decoding some of the, the, the data that's coming in. So some of, this, um, some of this information they need to provide to the deposit function. Uh, and then at the end of this, uh, of this target, they're just calling the deposit on their core contract. So super, super simple from a contract perspective. And do note that this did not require any changes on their actual core contracts. It's just a, a simple adapter contract that lives on all the destination chains that they want to support. And then as far as the, um, the UX goes, or the UI goes, um, let me just pull up their UI here. So what they did is um, they just built a simple connect service here uh, that pulls in our um, a, a couple of functions from our SDK, so our chain instruction SDK. Um, they wrap all of those into their own helpers, and then they call those helpers on the UI. So I'll show the UI in a second here. But some of those SDK functions that I'm talking about are, uh, for example, um, getting the pool fees for UniV3. So this is part of the swaps. Uh, right now, our swap adapter um, is, uh, is supporting Uniswap, and we're going to be adding other DEXs as well. So it, it's, a really, uh, it's a really cool um, kind of construction that we've done here where we can actually add as many DEXs that we, as we need. And then uh, anybody that kind of uh, uses the swap adapter under the hood uh, will be able to tap into um, all those different DEXs as sources for swaps. And then, uh, so, so as an integrator, you basically need to call this function to construct the call data for that swap that gets sent into the cross-chain call. Um, there's also another helper here that helps you construct the call data. 
Um, and then another one that helps you actually prepare um, both swap and X call uh, to send to connect. So at the end of this, what you're doing is um, you are basically calling these SDK functions, um, sending the X call in through our core SDK, and then Connects will pick that up, do the swapping and the bridging, uh, forward the call to Mean Finance on the destination side, and then finally deposit those funds for the user. So uh, what this all looks like at the end is um, something like this. So this is Mean. Uh, this is after they've implemented the chain abstraction. And um, now you can see that we're able to create a position on any of these supported chains. And we can fund with any asset from any other chain. So like, you know, wrapped Ether on Optimism or uh, Arbitrum ETH, uh, these are all, you know, possible. So what we're doing here is we're basically uh, creating a DCA um, schedule. And uh, what Mean is going to be doing under the hood is every day, every 24 hours, they're going to swap your initial funds from the origin chain into the funds that you're selling um, on Polygon. Or sorry, they're going to um, take the funds that you're funding with on the origin chain. They're going to bridge it over to Polygon. They're going to swap it into the fund, uh, into the asset that you wanted to sell, and then um, swap that into the asset that you wanted to basically DCA in the first place. So this is now enabling you to create a position on Polygon. Notice that I'm connected to Arbitrum, and I want to fund with my ETH on Arbitrum. So let's just say that I want to create this position, uh, you know, for one, one, one day I want to DCA once and um, they'll give you a good summary of like how much uh, Arbitrum ETH you're actually going to be funding with and then what position you're creating on Polygon. So in this case, it'll be um, swapping ETH for every day. And the, the, the other cool feature about Mean is that you can actually, like while your funds sit um, on the DCA position, like a, because they're swapped every 24 hours into your DCA position. While they're sitting in their protocol, you can actually generate yield on that sort of like static, um, those static funds. Uh, and then once you've created a position on Polygon, um, it'll send the it'll send the X call to Connect and do all the bridging under the hood, all the swapping, and you'll end up with, with your position. So I'm not going to go through this now because I already created a position yesterday. So I can actually just show you what that position looks like after all is said and done. Uh, so I created this position, um, sending USDC to WEF, and then uh, basically it's going to activate in a couple hours here. Uh, and, and all of that is basically to show you that I never once had to go into my wallet here and switch out of, um, out of the chain that I was already connected to, which is Arbitrum, even though I was setting up this position on Polygon. Uh, so the cool thing here is that now you're able to let users like do what what they wanted to do on your protocol, um, but interact with any any chain uh, without switching networks in their wallet, without having to go and get more gas on the other chain, uh, and not even having to navigate out of your protocol itself. So all of that is abstracted, if you will. Yeah, so that's basically it. Um, yeah. Amazing. I mean, it makes it makes so much intuitive sense, and, and I can't yeah, believe thanks. that really, really happy you know this that. is not um, ubiquitous and we're across. We're excited for this too. Um, like we think the three. more. And more protocols you know, adopt totally this kind of approach. Hash off um, or connects for building the, the, this. The better it will be amazing. for uh, most users across across the board. Like not even just you know regular uh, retail users who aren't that um, technical or uh, that deep into Web three, but even for like even for like veteran users and people who are actually building in this space, like ourselves, we we've noticed that like this whole process of interacting with multiple chains with every protocol is such a pain. Um, and so doing like being able to do it like this just makes everybody's lives easier.
Yeah, I think we had Arjun on uh, a previous call a few months ago, and he was talking about how he lost, you know, a, a good chunk of money by trying to bridge some funds, or I'm not sure exactly what he was doing, but he was basically saying, like, you know, as a veteran user, even for <laughs> me, you know, one click, I, I made this really simple mistake, and it resulted in, in losing, you know, a good amount of money. And that's just not really at all how, um, you know, the space is going to grow or you're going to scale Web3 web or, you know, whatever. The, the value propositions of Web3, which are many, but if if users have such a hard time um, executing transactions and in a multi-chain world or just whatever, even on a, you know, just yeah, providing liquidity on, on one chain, then it's not going to scale. So... Yeah, this is super cool. So I, I don't know if this is a stopping point for you, Eddie, but um, if it is, then we could take some questions. Yeah, so if, if anyone has any questions for, for Eddie, now's your shot. And you can either unmute your microphone or go ahead and enter a, your question into the chat and we'll speak it for you. Hi, Eddie. I got a few questions for you. So the first one is, um, how does it work with smart contract wallets? So if you're doing um, some kind of ECA, um, like, and obviously like the EOA is not, you know, it, or I, sorry, the smart contract wallet address is not going to be the same on another chain. How does that work um, yeah, in terms better. of, you know, using this this kit? Um, like for the, for the example that was given um, for, uh, Sorry, I forgot the DCA app name. Um, but if you, yeah, that's a really really good question. So if and you're if you're of, essentially uh, kind of DCA of the next into another chain, uh, kind of, is there uh, another safe that's um, going to be created or get, another get smart right wall that's created on the, the other end that you're controlling? That, um, How does that all work? The Connects protocol when you're doing the cross chain uh, bridge and execution of the call data on destination, there is a sort of like fallback address parameter that you can use. So. Um, since safes don't always have the same address across chains, uh, you can have in the UX like a little optional sort of box where you can say like, I actually want the funds or the position or, you know, whatever tokens that I get at the end of this operation to be delivered to a specific address. And so Connects will be able to route um, the result of that, of that call to the fallback address there. Very cool, I see. Um, and then my second question was, um, is there going to be some kind of plugin for an actual uh, using like these kind of things? So like rather than having, um, you know, funds coming yeah, from, um, from that's a really you know, good a chain too. to do so an operation, the, um, I would say would like, be the, like some kind of connector where level of you don't have to essentially pay for gas using the, use, the native, uh, the the native coin per, pay for per operations. Safe. But we've actually, we've actually built um, an upgrade to the cross chain part where you can pay uh you can pay the the gas fees um well sorry you can pay the gas fees on destination because on the destination chain there's always going to need to be like a relayer uh that executes your transaction so as part of the cross chain call you're also um paying this relayer fee uh that relayer fee is normally paid in um the native asset on the origin side but we're actually um we have already enabled the ability to pay for that relayer fee in the origin, uh, like transacting asset. So in the example that I was showing you on mean, like um, I was sending in, what was it? Wrapped, wrapped ETH on Arbitrum. So I could actually pay for the whole, uh, I could pay for the relayer fee in wrapped ETH instead of um, ETH on Arbitrum. But as far as like uh, actual gas on origin chain to do the the initial transaction, um, that's kind of where you know maybe uh, account of abstraction would come into play, where you know your protocol can actually um, decide to basically pay gas for uh, you know for the users or something like that. But um, yeah, the origin side kind of gas payment is uh, not something that is handled. Um, with Connects per se, but it would be like part of the protocol to decide.
I see. Thanks. Um, actually, I got one more for you. Um, how does the 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 swapping is that something that yeah, is so the handled swap by an aggregator, contract, so you get the best price, or uh, is it is just like one set place where implementing Uniswap, essentially, um, um, and we're also you know, the swaps are happening on the back end so to accommodate for whatever uh, token is to given by the user. Possible there, so we're we're currently um, just about ready to enable like the multi multi path swapping, so users can get the best uh, price, like not with just a single swap, but through multiple swaps if that's available and if the liquidity is there. Yeah, and there's no, um, yeah, there's no like centralized backend piece of that. That's all going through uh, contract interactions. Very cool. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a oh, question go. from Fibo Ape. You can <laughs> yeah, define um, sorry, who is going to get is, the position on uh, the other end. Can you define who is going to get um, the position? Can you define who is going to get the position um, so on the other end? So in this end? case, it would be the, the um, user who. Uh, would you who like that person to started like the DCA position? Oh, okay. And then um, the other question earlier about like what if you're doing this with a safe? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're doing this with a safe, then it's going to be like you're going to need to provide this some kind of fallback address. Yeah, okay. Fibo was just answering the, the other question. Oh, okay, cool. My bad. Uh, I have a quick question. So, when 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 you're aggregating all these layers into basically you know one front end, um, um, in terms of how like does front Connect end, ensure uh, that risks and that kind of the, thing, like the attack about, surface like, the actual, for uh, for hacks doesn't risk. broaden that it actually like becomes yeah, more um, secure. Well, to be honest, like whenever you're interacting with contracts, there is some kind of like inherent risk. Uh, there, there's always like contract risk. Um, but the ones that you're going to be interacting through the chain abstracting flow yeah, the are uh, yeah. the, the adapters and the receivers, those abstract contracts that you would basically um, inherit from our toolkit. Those actually have gone through um, rounds of audit. So um, they're, they're small contracts, but they've, they've all been audited. And so that was actually one of the reasons why we wanted to push this toolkit out is so that people don't have to... Um, so that people can have an audited abstract to inherit from and not have to get their entire like protocol re-audited uh, since the integration, as you saw with the adapters, is actually quite simple. Um, and then, you know, with the cross-chain piece, like uh, the Connects contracts, um, the team has basically uh, built this, this protocol with security in mind um, as like the number one priority. So all of the sort of, uh, all of the bridging operations are done with, um, the most, uh, like the most, um, the most used, the most canonical bridge of each chain. So basically, if you're going to be bridging assets from, let's say, like Ethereum to Poly, uh, Ethereum to Optimism, um, the most secure way to do that would be through Optimism's uh, canonical AMB, and that is actually what we're using under the hood for all the bridge transactions. So for each chain that we're supporting, we are choosing to use the uh, the transport layer that is the most secure. Very cool. Uh, that's all I have for, for questions. Anyone else have a burning question for Eddie? All right, cool. Well, I don't want to keep it for too long. Eddie, uh, thank you so much for that super informative demo. Um, I'm so excited to see this live um, and, and really excited to see what people do with it. And, uh, you know, I, I hope and I know that it will be live on uh, Gnosis Chain. Um, so 
yeah, thanks again for making the time and uh, we will talk to you soon. And thanks everyone also for attending the call. Uh, Living on Chain happens once every month. It's the uh, first Wednesday of each month. So yeah. next month will be June, or I'm sorry, July 5th uh, at the same time. So 3 p.m. UTC. And uh, look out for the announcement of the next team that we'll have on. And yeah, thanks everyone.